It is the end of hunting season 2024. We're actually into 2025. Today's January 3rd. Yeah, we're in the third day of January. And throughout this hunting season and in hunting seasons in the past, you know, I'm out here in the field. That's my buddy's camper because mine's in the shop. Watch my video about uh, all the forest river problems I've been having on my other channel. We've been here uh, opening weekend of hunting seasons, usually the first week in November in Texas, at least for rifle season. So we've been here off and on almost every weekend for the last two months. Not quite every weekend, but almost every weekend for the last two months. And throughout that time, I have used a variety of HT radios for different bands on GMRS, on ham radio, two meters, 220, 440, some six meters. And I wanted to show you guys what I used this year, what I consider to be the best field radio for the end of 2024 going into 2025. The best field radio, if you just lose it, if you drop it, run over it with the truck, drop it in the lake, if it gets rained on, if it gets left outside at night, something like that, it's not gonna be a huge loss because we're not talking about the ICOM ID 52 anniversary edition or the Kenwood THD 75. We're not talking about a five to $700 HT here. This is what I consider to be the best options for HT in the field, something that is you want to take care of because it's got a lot of features and you're going to spend your hard-earned money on it. But if push comes to shove, it's a little bit more disposable than a $500 HT is. So let's take a look now. Today's video is sponsored by Ham Radio Prep. If you don't have a license at all yet, check out hamradioprep.com. Check out their license courses and their license course bundles. They bundle together for an extra savings. And on top of that, you can always get a 20% discount extra with the coupon code of Jason20. Thank you, Ham Radio Prep, for sponsoring the channel. All right, this is the six HTs we're gonna talk about today. I've got these arranged here in order from least expensive to most expensive. Now, these last two right here are kind of debatable for whether it's something you actually wanna take into the field because these are this is $200 and this is about $220. So if that's too much for you to take into the field, you might wanna discount those two. But the rest of these, but these two add something that the rest of these don't. So we're gonna talk about all of those right now, one by one, starting with the least expensive. This is the BTEC uh, BF F8 HP Pro. It actually says Beofang on it. Uh, it's on BTEC's website. It's also on, um, it's listed on Amazon as a Beofang radio, but it is upgraded by BTEC. It holds more channels than your standard uh, UV5R. It's got a little bit sleeker looking design and beefier looking design than the UV5R, and it will do 220. Now, out here in the field where I'm at, there are repeat, there are 440 repeaters that I can easily hit with an HT. There's a 220 repeater about, I don't know, I'd say five miles as the crow flies that ways, but that repeater antenna is up 1,000, 1,500 feet, something like that, way up real high. You can easily key that repeater from multiple places. And this local uh, 442.600 repeater is uh, the Bridgeport Club. Depending on where you stand on this deer lease property, you can key that repeater. There's another repeater, there's a two meter repeater in Tacona. There's a couple of two meter repeaters in Bowie, which is the closest large town to where I am right now. But this is a great HT. Now, one thing I'll say about every one of these HTs today, every one of them are USB-C chargeable. The reason I chose these radios over some others is because all of them are going to be USB-C chargeable. And the great thing about USB-C chargeable when you're in the field is I have the, I had the charging brick video that came out not too long ago. So I have two or three of those bricks with me here in the field. One of them I carry in my pack all the time. One of them I keep in the truck and a couple of them I just carry in my hunting pack. So I, I usually have at least, I also have two or three battery boxes every time I come out here. So I have a plethora of ways to charge anything that's USB-C, my phone, my, ear, my Bluetooth earpieces, my radios, my camera that you're watching right here, my Osmo action camera is USB-C chargeable right there. So I always wanna have something that's USB-C and all of the radios we're gonna talk about today are USB-C chargeable, or at least the batteries are. Some of them the radios are chargeable, some of them the batteries are chargeable. This one's the batteries chargeable, comes with it in the factory. This one's about $65 from BTEC. I'll put a link in the description below for this and everything else we talk about today. The next one is also from BTEC. And now this one I have had for about, shoot, I don't know, seven, eight years. 
This is the UV 5x3. This looks like a Baofeng UV 5R radio. Okay, it looks just like a UV 5R. The difference between this and the UV 5R, of course, is the 5x3 also carries 220. You can see a very familiar looking screen there with uh, 146.52 on the top band and 224.200, which is the repeater I told you about a second ago that's uh, 1,000, 1,500 feet up. I've got the extended battery on it. Now this is the extended battery for the UV5R, but it fits the 5x3 because these is the same form factor. And I've got the tri-band Nagoya antenna on it. So while the radio itself is only about $65, the upgraded tri-band antenna, because it comes with two antennas, one dual band, one 220. I don't like having two antennas for three bands. I like having one antenna. The upgraded uh, extended battery that you see here. So this one right here is a newly released USB-C battery. You can see the USB-C charging port right there on the bottom of the battery. The previous battery had a, a round modular port over here on the side, and it um, would plug into a USB-A connection. But this one here is USB-C chargeable, extended battery, and I've had, the, like I said, I've had the radio itself for more than seven or eight years, still goes strong. I pretty much only use it in this environment. I take it with me hunting every year, and I use it a lot because the 220 repeater nearby is a good repeater to use. KC5 HWB testing. Very uh, quiet into the repeater great signal not much activity on this 220 repeater but when the internet is up on this uh this tower it's down on the whole tower at the time of this recording unfortunately but when it's up this repeater has all-star so i connect it to my all-star system i just really like using 220 there's a couple other 220 repeaters in the area but this one right here is great so this is why this is one of the reasons why i bring this radio to the hunting lease every year is because of the 220 aspect of it this next one here is the uv 9d mate This one I've had for several years also. This one is $159 at the time of this recording at buy2wayradios.com. And these over at bettersaferadio.com, they were the first ones to introduce them, but I think everybody has them now as well. These are UV9 batteries for all the UV9 series walks on radios that are now USB-C chargeable on the, on the bottom here too. So I've upgraded all of my radios to UV uh, to this uh, new battery with the USB-C charger. Like I said, everything's USB-C we're talking about today. I've got this one sitting on Simplex right now, 146.52, KC5 HWB on 146.52. You might have heard that behind you because I have another radio on that right there. This one will do about 10 watts per band. I did a review on this radio when it was new. I've also had this one for six, seven, eight years, something like that. I use this at the hunting lease a lot because it's orange. More than one time, I've dropped this when walking to a deer stand or walking back from a deer stand and a friend of mine has found it driving or walking down the same road later that day because this is orange and it shows up so well. So if you are the type of person to drop something or leave it laying somewhere and you're losing stuff all the time, this orange color really does help when you're out in the field. This is one of my favorite radios. This one here, now I don't know if this is true today, so don't go quoting me on this. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. I don't want to make anyone mad. But this was one of the original UV90 mates, and this is full open transmit. So this one will work on GMRS frequencies. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm saying you can do that if you choose to accept your mission, which is to get a GMRS license. Get a GMRS license, and then uh, this one will work for ham radio and GMRS frequencies. Or at least I'm, to I'm told that it will. I meant to say I'm told that it will work on GMRS frequencies. I'm not sure. I haven't actually tested it myself. This next one is a BTEC UV Pro. Now this one's fairly new. This one just came out earlier this year. Um, they, did some, uh, they did some beta firmware for it for a full TNC packet. And then the full TNC packet firmware, uh, the KISS TNC firmware was released about a month ago at the time of this recording. So that means you can Bluetooth this to a device like an Android tablet or phone. You can use APRS Droid with it. You can use Packet with it. You can send, you can uh, Bluetooth it to a laptop and send WinLink messages over two meters. If you have a two meter eye gate that, or a WinLink gateway that's near you, you can do that with it. You can do APRS with it. It has built-in APRS. Um, you can program this from the app on your phone. It'll do a lot of extra different stuff like that. About 165 at the time of this recording. BTEC sent me this radio, and this is uh, virtually the same radio as the VGC version. It's the, like the N7600 or something. N76 maybe, something like that. But I emailed BTEC and I was like, okay, tell me, are these radios exactly the same? And they gave me a list of reasons why this one is in fact not the same as the VGC. This one is a Part 90 certified radio. So it is full open transmit legally. So you can use it on GMRS 
Whether that's legal or not, that's a little bit still up in the air. I've been reading some conflicting stories about that recently, and maybe I'll do something about that again soon. I'll do another video about that soon. But regardless of that, a lot of your radios used on GMRS these days are Part 90 radios, uh, Kenwood Part 90 radios, uh, Motorola Part 90 radios. Whether it's good or bad, right, wrong, I'm not saying. I'm just saying that's what happens. This one is a Part 90 radio, so it's a full up and transmit on 2 meters and 440. Just a dual band radio. The UV9 D Mate was also just a dual band radio. USB C charging battery in the back. Android and iOS programmable. A KISS TNC to connect it to your laptop to do stuff like WinLink, APRS, APRS Droid. And, and which enhances a lot of APRS features. And at 165 today, that might be a little bit pricey for a field radio, but uh, you know, for all the features it packs in there and for all the extra stuff it does, especially being able to connect WinLink and APRS, I think this is a good choice for field radio. This next one here is also fairly new. This one's a 199. This is the new Anytone D168 dual band DMR radio. Now, if you're not into DMR, you probably don't you probably don't care about this but if you are into dmr this is a fantastically priced full featured fully packed radio smaller than the d878 uv2 plus this one is us usb c programmable and chargeable on the body of the radio not on the battery but on the body of the radio i did a video about this you can go watch that and get more information about this radio that same that same tower that has the uh, 220 antenna over there also has a dmr repeater connected into the Texas statewide DMR network that I can easily hit from this DMR HT anywhere on this hunting lease. So I enjoy using DMR at this location. And this is the radio that I've been carrying this season because of that, because I still enjoy talking on DMR sometimes. I can get a fantastic signal into that, uh, the Rostin repeater, it's the Rostin tower I'm talking about. And this is the only radio we're talking about today that does DMR. So if DMR is interesting to you, even DMR simplex, this might be a great choice for a field radio for you. One of the cheapest, most feature-packed DMR radios on the market today. Not the cheapest DMR radio on the market, but one of the most feature-packed radios. The last one today we're going to talk about is the Waxon Q10H. I almost didn't add this one because it is $220, so it's, it's not really what I would categorize, categorize as a throwaway radio. The thing it brings to the table is you can get it in different colors. It comes in uh, red, obviously. Green, blue, and black, I think, are the other colors. So it's also much easier to see if you drop it in the field or something like that. If you're out in the field in the, in the woods right now and, and you drop your radio, you can definitely see it as you're walking by. So this one is a quad band radio. It will do not only two meters and 440, but 220, like I said before, and also six meters. This is the only six meter HT in the lineup today. So if you got a couple of hunting buddies that are hams, and you guys really want to get out on a channel that no one else is on, you can get on 52.525, the uh, FM simplex calling frequency for the 6 meter amateur radio band, and you guys can have the frequency basically to yourselves. It doesn't get used a whole lot. I like to monitor that frequency when I'm out here in the field or when I'm driving down the road if I have my 6 meter rig on. You'll hear activity on it sometimes. It's pretty rare, but it is a, it is a cool band to talk on if you're in close proximity and you want to have just like a channel that nobody else is on. Same thing can be said for the 223.500, FM simplex calling frequency for the 220 megahertz band. But this one, if you're into six meters, if you've got a nearby six meter repeater, when I did my first video about this radio, I had several people in the comment come by and say, hey, yeah, I've actually got a six meter repeater near me. Doesn't get used very much, but if I get this radio, I might start using it. So that's a good thing to know about too. So if 220 and six meters don't interest you, then $219 is probably a little bit too much for a knock around radio in the field that has a, po a higher possibility of getting lost or stolen. But I am including it today. Once again, it is USB-C programmable and chargeable on the body of the radio, not on the battery, but on the body. So, and it adds the fourth band to it, unlike everything else we talked about today. So what do you guys think about that? What do you think about those four radios? The ones that I commonly use them, I've been using this UV Pro BTEC quite a bit this season because it's been, it just came out a, a little while back and it's uh, that KISS TNC function is really cool. So I've been using that and I've been using this uh, BF uh, F8HP because it has 220 on it. And then my, and then probably, those are probably the most commonly used radios for myself this year. On top of that, I have used the 5x3 a couple times and the UV90 Mate a couple times. And then uh, I did some six meter stuff by myself because there's nobody's on six meters out here, but 
could be cool to, a thing to have for six meters if you're into that sort of thing in your area. What other radios do you think might fit into this category of, hey, this is a good radio, it works great, it offers these features, but if you lose it, you're not gonna be out five, six, seven hundred dollars like you would if you lost your high dollar Yezu or Kenwood HT. What else do you think might be worthy of this list? Put a comment below, I'd like to know. Thanks for watching today.